What's up, everybody? This is Darren from CleftoneGrooves.com, thanking you again for joining me in the next installment of the video series, Getting Better Audio at Home. Now, if you are a public speaker or you are a self-published author and you're looking to put your message into an audio format for your audience to take with them wherever they go and you want high quality and you want to do it yourself, this is the video series for you, my friends. And I also have another treat for you here, a different microphone today. This is the Rode NT2A condenser microphone. Uh, again, just trying to provide that uh, different flavor for you so you can see the possibilities that, there, that are out there uh, by choosing different microphones. And just maybe give you an, a little bit of an idea of what kind of results you might be able to get by using some of these different microphones. So let's move forward here and talk about what I've been wanting to talk about, just dying to talk about for a long, long time with putting this video series together. It's a continuation of the last video talking about software. And this is one of my favorite pieces of software, so much so that I wanted to make just a video spending time gloating basically over Personas Studio One. Uh, so yes, this software is made by a little company out of Louisiana by the name of Personas. And um, full disclosure, right now I'm gonna tell you I am a fanboy and I am cheating again. I've got my notes here because I don't want to leave anything out. Uh, but you probably also recognize that by now I am leading you down this particular path of using Studio One and perhaps other Personas products. Well, why? It's because I have a vision. I have a dream. I have a dream that one day you will all make Studio One your favorite dog too. Now, clearly I ain't that good at doing impressions, so I'm just gonna go ahead and stop while I'm ahead of myself. Uh, but I will tell you that the path I'm leading you on in your journey to getting better audio at home, it's a great one, and here's why. Let me ask you this. Do you want to record and edit your audio quickly? Yeah, most likely you do. Do you want to record and edit your audio and do it with ease? Yeah, that's kind of important. You need to be able to do it pretty easily. Um, what about having fun while you do it? Yeah, you want to be able to do that too. Uh, and ultimately, do you want to save some coin while you do that? Oh yeah, definitely. I know you do. Now if you said no to any of these questions, just close up your computer, close your laptop down, whatever you're using, go back to bed and just don't ever get out of the bed ever again. But anyway, if you said yes, then let me kind of reminisce on some of the reasons why I switched to Studio One and why it quickly became one of my favorite pieces of software ever. Um, First and foremost, Personas, the company behind Studio One, they are very, very customer centric. Um, you know, there, there's, let's, let's focus on a few examples here. There were some glaring issues with my last doll uh, that many people besides me were facing that um, we kind of had to come up with our own workarounds or our own solutions. We had to change settings in the software or even outside of the software, we had to change all kind of settings in our computers and do all kind of crazy things just to make this software work right so it wouldn't crash, so it wouldn't have all kind of error messages that would pop up. I mean, there would be times I would turn around to watch the TV, my computer would be running, I'd leave the software running, I'd turn back around after I'm done watching TV and there's an error message and I haven't even been using the software. What the heck is that, right? Um, that's just very disruptive to the creative process. I mean, I literally got to a point where I spent more time being a computer technician rather than being a musician. And when you have that going on, that is a huge, huge buzz killer. It's a problem. And I got so frustrated with that that I literally stopped making music for two years just because I didn't want to fight the software anymore. That's no way to live. I'm sorry, folks. But that is no way that you should have to live if you are a creative person like myself. Uh, now, looking at Studio One, not saying that it is perfect, 
no software is perfect, but I will say that virtually compared to that last piece of software, which shall remain unnamed, uh, there are virtually no error messages. And I can count on my hand, one hand, how many times that Studio One has crashed on me. And usually it's because I'm probably doing something on the computer that I shouldn't be doing in the first place, like using too many plugins or something. I'm, I'm overloading the system because I'm like, oh, wow, let me do this and this and this and this. Because Studio One is so intuitive, it just lets you free flow and get carried away and you just bog your computer down and, you know, it just goes bleh and crashes on you. But, um, like I said, it's only been a handful of times that that has, has ever happened. And while we're talking about how solid uh, Studio One is built and how well it runs without error messages and crashes and things, whenever there are bugs that are reported, whenever there are feature requests uh, that are sent to Personas, they have been on top of that. They have um, made sure to really listen to the customer's voice. And that's another thing I appreciate about a company like Personas. Um, and while we're on the subject of feature requests, that was kind of my second reason for switching to uh, Studio One. Uh, some of the most basic features that you would expect that would come in a doll around the time Studio One came out, 2009, and a little bit before that, uh, 2006, 2007, all those DAWs that were competing with the one that I was using were coming out with features as standard that this DAW that I was using had been around for years, but they wouldn't put some of those standard features in the updates. Now, they would, uh, they, I think they finally did get some of those uh, features that people have been requesting for years, but while I was using it, none of those features were added. Um, so, yeah, you know, I jumped ship. Um, and again, Studio One came standard day one in their first iteration of their software with those features. Um, and then the other cool thing with Personas and Studio One and updates and upgrades, um, whenever Personas made those uh, those marginal updates, not those big updates like from version one to two, but like version one to version 1.1 to version 1.3 and 2.5 to 2.6, none of those marginal updates costed or cost me any money at all. Uh, the only time I ever had to pay for an upgrade was from version 1 to 2 to 3. That's awesome. So Personas is interested in saving their customers money. In fact, they were intentional about not charging for those marginal updates because the DAW that I was using before, well, when they released their marginal updates, yeah, sometimes they wanted hundreds of dollars and other times it was still some form of payment that you were going to make to get that update. And the updates that were marginal that they expected those payments for, they were just that, marginal. They gave you a few things here and there, maybe a plug-in, and they're like, oh yeah, that's cool. But never the things that people were requesting the most, and never the fixes that people complained about the loudest. So again, they were not very responsive, whereas Personas was. Uh, let's talk about some other great things about Studio One. Um, when you purchase one of their audio interfaces, one of Personas' audio interfaces, like the AudioBox 22 VSL that I showed you in video two of this series, you get a copy of Studio One Artist for free. Now, if you go on their website and just buy that software, it's $99 to get that, which is still a pretty good price, but free is always better, right? And there are three versions, by the way, of Studio One. There is Studio One Prime, their free version. There is Studio One Artist, which we are talking about now. And there's also their flagship version, which is what I run on my computer for $400 that gives you their full-blown unlimited everything, the whole enchilada, right? Well, you get Studio One Artist free when you buy one of their pieces of hardware. So now you're getting even more bang for your buck when you buy from Personas. Um, the other cool thing that they add some really cool value to, uh, to you is where they uh, also provide five activations for one license purchase. And that's for all versions of their software. You can activate your software five times on, on, on five different computers. And so for me, since I've got two machines, it's great. One I use for 
uh, bigger projects at home on my desktop. And then on my laptop, I use uh, the uh, the same version of, of everything. It's just that when I need to be mobile, it's great because I can transfer the files between the computers. And here's what's even cooler about that. Okay, so on my Mac, my Mac is my laptop, but my PC is my large computer. The compatibility is so seamless with moving files between the two platforms on Studio One that it you it really doesn't um, it doesn't really have any side effects you know of of oh this only works because it's only on a Mac or this is only on a PC it just works and that's what's so cool um, another really cool feature uh, this is one I just thought of it's not even in my notes but I just thought about this is that on your home network whether it's a PC or a Mac you can control Studio One from your iPad. So let's say you've got a booth set up in, in a, a different room or your microphone's in another room, isolated from your, your audio work, uh, workstation. You can use your iPad to record, to play back what you recorded, even to adjust the, uh, the, the faders on the knobs and turn up things and turn things down and do panning. You can do a lot of that right there on the iPad. You have a remote control to your software, and that iPad works whether it's got your version of Studio One on a PC or on the Mac. That is so slick. Um, the other really cool thing is uh, what I mentioned earlier, and that is that uh, Studio One is so easy to use. The technology literally gets out of your way. Um, it's so easy to use. If you know how to click, how to drag and how to drop on a computer, whether that's Mac or PC, you pretty much know how to use Studio One. If you read the reviews, intuitive and user-friendly often comes up in their reviews of their software. Um, and with this lack of errors and crashes and ease of use, it's like the ultimate apex combination of unleashing somebody's creativity which always happens to me every time I open that software up, I'm gonna make something hot out of that software. Um, the technology, again, like I said, it gets out of your way. It almost figuratively gets behind you and pushes you in advancement towards whatever it is you're trying to capture, that, that creative spark that you have. And that's what I love about Studio One. Uh, and lastly, one feature that's only available in the flagship version is not only do you have the side of Studio One, for capturing your creativity and making your songs or your recordings or whatever it is you're doing on that side. But in the flagship version, they also, they also uh, went ahead and provided a, a full mastering suite uh, part of the software. So whatever you create in that song side of the, uh, the software, you can move it over into this project side and you can arrange those, those tracks like on a CD and then you can burn a CD of those tracks you can add a little bit of a finishing polish to kind of make all your tracks sound similar um, you can um, uh, you can make uh, CD images that you can send off to uh, CD duplication houses right there all in Studio One it's so awesome um, and if there's anything that you want to do as far as uploading files to SoundCloud it links to your SoundCloud account as well they have really thought about a lot of really neat, intuitive things in Studio One. It's so easy to use. Um, there are so many other features that I could go on and on and on about, um, but that will pretty sum it up, pretty much sum it up for me as to why I really like Studio One. Um, this has pretty much been an answer to all the things that I wanted before Studio One existed, and. Pretty much it's been the answer to all the things that I never knew I needed, but now that I have them in Studio One, oh my gosh, I couldn't live without it. You know, it's kind of like the same question people ask, how did we live without cell phones, right? There are so many features in Studio One that are like that, that it's like, uh, I just could never see myself going back. Oh, and personally for me, Moving from the last DAW to this new one, one other really cool feature is they thought of the key maps of some of the most popular software out there that was competing with Studio One 
and just so you don't have a learning curve if you're coming from another doll um, you can tell Studio One work like this doll or work like that doll and they already have the key maps built out for you so if you're used to certain keyboard commands or controls you can make it the same in Studio One. How amazing is that? Uh, Personas really did knock this one out of the park. So again that'll wrap it up uh, for Studio One. I know I keep thinking of more features off the top of my head um, but um, anyway in the next video I want to talk about uh, computers and um, what you might need as far as being able to record your audio on your computer what kind of resources you would need as far as processor speed all that good stuff um, and I kind of waited on that one because nowadays it's rare that you run into somebody who doesn't have a computer so maybe we'll just look at what you already have and maybe how you can make a few tweaks just to make it run that much better with your audio software but until the next video we will see you next time stay tuned for that one and uh, you know what guys this is going to be an awesome series as we continue on so stick with me and uh, we'll have some more goodies for you in the future all right we'll catch you later